All right. Hello, everyone. Welcome. Thank you. So, oh, that was very enthusiastic and energetic for the last presentation of the day. Oh, I can feel the love in the room all over the place. Friends, thank you so much for joining me. My name is Jason Levine, Principal Worldwide Evangelist for Adobe Creative Cloud. Oh, and are we streaming this one, friend in the back? We are. Thank you for joining me again. This is the last presentation of the day. But of course, you've got three more days to showcase all of the new features that have uh, just arrived to the digital video and audio applications here in Creative Cloud. For the next 25 minutes or so, we're going to talk about some of those innovations in Adobe Audition. So starting here with a blank screen, which I normally don't do, but the reason for that is that we've done a lot to really embrace this mantra that's on the back of our shirts here, which is powerful alone, unstoppable together. So for many of you, I'm sure you're here because you're longtime Audition users. Um, but there are many people who sort of use Audition really for just a quick edit or maybe some denoising. And of course, there's always been some beautiful integration between Audition and Premiere via dynamic link technology or Edit Original, where you could be working on a sequence in Premiere and then send it over to Audition non-destructively and then continue finishing your mix. And then in the last couple of versions, you had the ability via Media Encoder to export directly out of Audition, or you could send it back to Premiere, or create stems, or create an XML, or an OMF, lots of different ways to get in and out. But we heard from editors who were working in Premiere and wanted to do more with audio and wanted even a smoother level of integration. And what they really wanted was, I want to do my edit, lock it down, and then when I want to work on the sound, I don't want to have to send and rely on Dynamic Link. I just want to be able to open up my Premiere project directly in Audition. So in this new version released earlier this week, you'll see that I have our Premiere Pro project file here, which I can now take any Premiere Pro project file, drag it directly into the editor or our multi-track interface. And just like when you're importing projects, say Premiere into After Effects or vice versa, you get to choose the sequence that we're working on. So we're going to choose this scene between trailer. Click OK on this. Now I've got one linked piece of media that I got to relink for you live while I'm here. Let's go ahead and grab that MP4. It's this one right here. Click open on that. OK. There it is. Yes. Thank you, Adobe employee, for clapping. <laughs> Eric, you're always here for that. Thank you. Five, six years running now. I can always count on you, sitting in that seat. This is extremely powerful because, again, regardless of what you have in Premiere, whether it's 8K, and by the way, this is sourced from 8K, uh, Red Weapon, if you saw my Premiere Pro demonstrations earlier today, 4K FS7 and 4K A7, uh, A7 all of that is streaming live directly into Audition without Premiere Pro even being open. So this gives you complete control and flexibility when working here in the multi-track. All right. Now, taking a little step further and going a step further here, I'm going to open up another session for you. Because one of the other things that we, again, unstoppable together, wanted to, or we've been hearing a lot about from customers over the years is, particularly when you're doing sound and sound design for video. Audition has always had an unlimited track count, which is wonderful. Pretty much all of your DAWs do these days. But in the case of even of this one, which is about, I don't know, 15, 20 tracks, as you start adding more and more, it just gets very hard to start to navigate through the multi-track. Now, we had a function here called zoom out full axes, and it would sort of do a vertical and horizontal zoom in to show all the tracks in view. But you would often end up with this kind of weird, uneven, not pleasant to look at kind of view. Happy to say that that's been completely revamped now. And when you do zoom out full, it does just that. Everything comes into view in its full duration, horizontally, vertically. You can see at the bottom there in yellow, all of your bus tracks. By the way, it's also worth pointing out for those of you who've never even done this before, you know, if you just right click along the track headers right here, you know, you can change track colors really easily. I love to color code everything. Um, also, if you send things from Premiere or color code your tracks with all of our new label colors in Premiere Pro, you now have 16 user definable editable colors. All of that comes over to your session and audition as well. So new zoom out full also tons of work in terms of playback scrolling and just UI improvements as you're navigating through the interface. 
But even still, as we start working on our multi-tracks, you know, ultimately, you're just going to start doing a lot of this, right? And yes, you can pick up tracks, and you can move them around and reorder them and do all this sort of thing, but it just it, it started to get a bit confusing. So we wanted to make it easier for you to really hide or show only the tracks that you needed to work on at any given time, borrowing a little bit of this tech from, say, Photoshop. So we're happy to announce the new Tracks panel, which you see down here, with the familiar Photoshop uh, eyeball icons here. So let's say I simply wanted to work on just dialogue tracks. I only want to see and work on and process dialogue. First, I'm just going to come over here and I'm going to mute my sound effects and music buses. And then in the tracks panel, I'm simply going to turn off, it's like helicopter, so this is some uh, sound design, waves, breathing, that counts as dialogue, water, thunder, bubbles, bubbles, rumble, music, leave dialogue, turn off sound effects, turn off music mix. And now I only see those tracks in view. So just like you have the show, hide, and after effects, and similarly in Photoshop, you now have that functionality here in Audition. Very, very useful, very, very efficient when, again, you just need to get to things quickly. But even better, by session, we allow you to create presets of these configurations, which are, of course, accessible via keyboard shortcuts. So let's say preset one is going to be dialogue only. You'll also notice that we have some presets made for you. So I can say show only audio tracks, show only bus tracks, only tracks with clips, etc. So let's turn everything back on. And now let's do just all the sound design. So again, I'll turn off all of our dialogue here. All right, let's just mute that. All right, did it? OK, good. And we'll come up to our tracks panel here, track visibility, save into preset number two. Now, I'm terrible with keyboard shortcuts. Anyone who knows me knows how true that is. So if I want to bring back all my dialogue, what is it? Shift one, OK, and shift two for the other. That seems like I should have been able to retain that, Eric. Probably recall that one. Shift one, there's your dialogue. Shift two, there's all your sound design. Again, we can wind this back. Just to verify, start playing this. So you can hear all the sound design. And if we do our shift one again, now we should just hear dialogue. Whatever dialogue is in there. Okay. Oh, this breathing is like, what is this? Agitated male breathing. OK. <laughs> I just had to really see for myself what that was. OK. So now that we've done that, let's go back to our shift two here. Sound design. So I use Audition for everything that I create. I use Audition for all the audio that I create for video. I use Audition for all the audio that I create for children's music. Yes, I actually write children's music. Um, and every record and thing that I produce, all of which you can find on Spotify, Apple Music, Google Play, and anywhere that music is streamed or sold. But sound design is actually something that I've gotten into in the last couple of years. I did it years ago, and I've kind of gotten back into it. One limitation, however, was when lining up audio clips against picture, against time code, it was always a little bit challenging. Um, to really line things up properly, because we didn't have a true sort of clip spotting functionality where I could grab a clip and have some kind of visual indicator along with time code to show me exactly where I was in time. So you may have noticed that there's time code on the video here. If we right click and go into our video preferences, so aside from the time code itself, so you've got the ability, of course, to resize your time code, you can change to various positions. You can display session or individual media clip time code. So this is very useful, again, if you're doing any kind of ADR, right, dialogue replacement against video. But what you'll now also notice inside these preferences, and this is enabled by default, spot video frame when adjusting audio clip. 
So true clip spotting directly inside the multi-track. So let me go ahead and shuttle forward. All right, I'm going to move this one out of position here. So we have this change in the scene. Let's take a listen here. All right. So right at this frame where we go from the TV monitor to this underwater scene, I have this like explosion sound. I really want to punctuate that kind of being underwater effect. So with clip spotting enabled, I can take my clip and grab it. And now what you see, this blue line that you're seeing there, represents the frame where I'm inserting the beginning of that clip. So I can find the exact position that I need, drop this in, wind back, go ahead and play this now. And really just nail the position of that sound design very, very quickly. So if you're doing sound for games, again, sound for video, sound for anything, Audition just has one more little bit of edge now to make that process even better and to really line those things up very effectively. Now, it's worth pointing out, too, of course, that um, in terms of your time displays and things, we're, of course, working here in 23976. Um, you have extremely flexible and fast zooming capabilities. I'm just using my little gesture, whoops, gesture here on the mouse. So you can get all the way down to sample. Those are samples, by the way, like super fast. So these are just some of those kind of zooming improvements. And by the way, you see how smooth everything is as you're zooming along um, that you're able to do directly here inside the multi-track very, very quickly in this latest version. Now, just speaking about that, because we're talking about a project that came from Premiere Pro, you might recall, any of you ever use the send sequence to audition function? OK, some hands, some heads. OK, very good. So when you would create uh, and send the sequence from Premiere Pro to Audition, again, it was non-destructive in the sense that what it was actually doing was creating new copies. It was extracting and building new copies of all the audio from Premiere and bringing those extracted versions over to the Audition side. Just a fail-safe to give you, again, sort of a backup copy of your audio. It's all non-destructive in any case. You always have access to the originals. That's fine. The problem is, is that what happened is you ended up inside of your files panel with hundreds of clips, in some cases, all labeled extracted audio underscore one hyphen zero one, and then the file name, very hard to manage. And if you went into your list of files here, everything kind of had the same relative name, really hard to find stuff, really hard to organize, and even more of a pain to archive. If you wanted to archive these things from Audition, you really ended up with an enormous amount of media that wasn't necessarily specifically labeled in a way that was useful to you. So now, when you send clips over, one, we don't do that anymore, and two, we now work with what we call its compound media import. So in the case of something like this MP4 file, notice that all of these files, WAVs, MP4s, whatever it is, all appear as a single file. Before, you would have seen the MP4 and then the audio file itself. Well, now if we twirl this down, what you'll actually see is there's the video, and here's the audio. And if we further twirl this down, now we have access to the various channels of that audio. And by the way, you, know, you can use uh, the various fields of metadata here to let you know the channels, the sample rate, the duration of all the content that you're working with. So here's some movie files here again. So here's a four channel, uh, likely coming off of a red with four channels of mono audio. And from this, what this allows you to do is effectively insert and bring in only the media that you need, even from specific channels. So this includes the ability to bring in, say, multi-channel ambisonics as one or as four channels, or as an interleaved file, right? one file containing all four channels, or to split up things individually. And it just keeps the whole sort of structure inside the multi-track that much more organized. So compound media import. Doesn't sound super sexy, but it's very useful in an audio post workflow. All right. Let's take these out of here, and let's quickly bounce into 
our waveform editor, and I'm going to pull up the metadata panel. So how many of you uh, create MP3s? Ever make MP3s? Some? OK. If you make MP3s for iTunes or, again, Spotify or anything like that, um, we have always supported ID3 v2 tags. But one thing that you weren't able to do in the past was to actually add your album art directly from within Audition. So now you'll see inside of your metadata tab here, we actually have the ability to import your album art. And I think if we hover over this, does it tell you? You could either bring it in as, oh yeah, there you go, um, ping or JPEG. Typically, for those music services that I mentioned, um, 1,400 by 1,400 pixels is what they're looking for. You don't really want it bigger than that. One, it's not going to be displayed any larger. And two, it's just going to artificially inflate the size of your MP3. 1,000 by 1,000 is kind of the minimum, but it doesn't really matter. Ultimately, anything basically over about 800 by 800 pixels square is what it's looking for. But it's just one uh, extra step now that you can do in Audition before uploading to iTunes, or if you're, again, creating content which will end up on Spotify or other streaming services, you can embed that artwork in there directly. All right? OK. So there's lots of other additional things here that I want to show you, one of which, in particular, let me go back to our dialogue session. One in particular is an effect that we actually introduced in the last major update to Audition, which you'll find under the Amplitude and Compression session here, which is the Dynamics effect. Now, this is something that we had in Premiere. It's also available to you in Premiere Pro. Um, it previously existed in Premiere in past versions, but in uh, October, November of last year, we reimagined this Dynamics effect. Now, why I'm pulling this up to you as audio editors is one, it's a combination gate, compressor, expander, limiter. Two, Audition has never had a native noise gate before. So this is a phenomenal, very easy to set, wonderful sounding noise gate with, again, built-in compression, expansion, and limiting, if you so desire. Um, anything that you say use here in Audition, if you're going to be sending back to Premiere or if you're sending it from Premiere to Audition, all of those settings are retained non-destructively. It's really nice to have this flexibility. I even believe we've got some presets in here. Obviously, yeah, presets to get you started using this. Previously, if you wanted to noise gate, what do we noise gate for? So you're capturing dialogue, you're in a noisy environment, and you want to, you know, after the person finishes speaking, you want to silence any of the background noise. There really wasn't a very simple, easy, eloquent way to do that before. By the way, you'll also notice that while we're in the uh, waveform view here, you always now have a direct connection to the video. So if you're accessing your audio files from the multitrack, you'll see the exact frame that you're on when working on that content here. The previous way that you would have done uh, noise gating was via this dynamics processor. Now, I don't know how many of you have used this. This actually continues to be one of my favorites. Um, I, do, I do love this effect. The problem is, is that it's, it's still a little bit difficult to set. Now, we did actually add some gain reduction metering uh, in that last version. You've also got sort of real-time amplitude analysis here. And you have your manual settings. Again, and if you enable noise gating here, this will act like it's basically creating a downward expander. But the new dynamic effect is so nice, so easy to use. And if you're wondering how it's set, you can watch one of many YouTube and or Creative Cloud Facebook page videos that I've created on auto-ducking and using the auto-gate inside the limiter. So really simple, um, threshold, attack, release, hold, that's it. It just works. And of course, we've got presets here to get you started with all of these features involved. OK? Now, the last thing I'm going to show you here um, is actually related to something in our essential sound panel. So I'm going to come back over here. Uh, to Premiere, I just want to hear this real quickly. Yeah, I, it's weird. Like I've I've always struggled with self doubt. Okay. All these these questions about like oh. All right. So let me go into our uh, let's see, essential video mixing. Uh, maybe I'll just go and pull up our essential sound panel here. So for those of you unfamiliar with essential sound, this was a panel that we developed for Premiere Pro and Audition. With the concept really for video editors, but it's useful to audio editors as well. And what this does is, by tagging your media inside your multi-track or your sessions, 
it gives you access to all of the typical filters and effects that you would commonly use to process audio. So in the case of this, uh, we've got music, which actually looks like it was already ducked. Let me see if we actually have enabled the ducking on this. No, we haven't. OK, it's just keyframed. Interesting. All right, so I'm going to bring, I'm going to rebring this file in so I can show this to you properly. Let me get rid of these here. I'm going to insert this. Are you enough? Uh, what are you going to do with your life? OK, perfect. All right. So again, we've got this soundtrack. We've got dialogue. And we want to basically ride the fader to duck the music underneath the dialogue, OK? Now, this is something that we just added to Premiere. You actually had this available to you in the previous version of Audition. And you can do this leveraging the Essential Sound Panel. So the first thing I'm going to do is highlight all of our dialogue and come into Essential Sound. And I want to tell Essential Sound, let's clear the audio type, tell it that all of these files are dialogue. And when I do that, it reveals to you all of the common effects and filters that you would use to process dialogue. Now, even if you're not an expert, this is so easy to immediately begin processing and making this audio sound better. First and foremost, you have loudness auto matching. So anyone who works in broadcast, let's say that all of your dialogue or your content in general needs to be loudness adjusted to meet the ITU standard, minus 24 LUFS, right? You can click on auto match and it will do that. In fact, in Audition's Essential Sound, um, via your master template view, you can actually set exactly what that loudness level is measured in loudness units relative to full scale. Now, you also have the ability to repair audio. So you want to remove noise. You want to de-rumble, de-hum, remove sibilance. This can all be done by single slider controls. When you enable these effects, what you're actually doing is enabling them at the clip level. So you still have complete control over all of the various parameters so here we go, like adaptive noise reduction. And watch as I adjust this reduce noise slider. This is actually using some Adobe Sensei technology under the hood, machine learning technology. It's not merely just more or less, right? This is supreme, supreme intelligence. Just came up with that now. Supreme intelligence to configure your audio here. But for this, I don't need any repair. I just want to add a little bit of clarity. So this is probably my most favorite thing next to ducking in Essential Sound, which is adding dynamic compression. Compression is the hardest thing to do if you're not an audio engineer. Once you learn it, you get it. But until you do, it's hard. So here, what we can do is I can enable dynamics. And I'm simply going to move this slider to the end. And you'll see what this will allow you to do is to set the sound from natural to more focused, really bringing all of that dialogue to the forefront, right up front, so we can really make it that much clearer. Now, we haven't ducked anything yet, but watch as I start to play this back and adjust dynamics and listen to what it's doing. Yeah, I, it's weird. Like, I've, I've always struggled with self-doubt. All these, these questions about, like, oh, like, are you in before? What are you going to do with your life? After. All right, so you can see it's just a little bit more up front, a little bit clearer. This dynamic slider is amazing. Once again, it's using that dynamics processor effect that I showed you before. And powered by Adobe Sensei, it's auto-detecting all the threshold levels of all of your dialogue. That's, that's the point at which compression begins. That's the hardest thing for people to grasp. It does it automatically, quite brilliantly. And it'll, it'll even introduce downward expansion. So in the silent sections, it's quiet. It's really wonderful and very musical and very natural. And then what we can do is I can tag our music here as music, and I can enable ducking. Now, when I do that, by default, it wants to duck against dialogue clips, which we just tagged, right? But you can also duck against music, sound effects, ambience, or let's say we brought in this session from somewhere else via an OMF or XML or sent from some other project in Premiere that came from another NLE where nothing was tagged, you can use this option to duck against clips without any assigned type. And then you have three very basic sliders that do incredible things. Your sensitivity is your threshold control. I'm going to leave that at the default. Then you have your reduction amount, reduced by. Now, 18 dB is a little aggressive for this, so maybe we'll go to around minus 10 something. And then your fade time is when it begins ducking, the time that it ramps into the duck and the time that it ramps back up. So 800 is the default. 
eight tenths of a second. It's quite musical. But look at what has happened. When we look down below, it is now keyframed for you. The ramping in and out of the dialogue automatically. So, before we go, take a quick listen now with auto ducking in place. Yeah, I, it's weird. Like I've I've always struggled with self doubt. All these these questions about like oh like are you enough? Uh, what are you gonna do with your life? All right, really simple. Yes, yes, clap worthy at the end of the day. I couldn't agree more. Now, one difference between here and Premiere, we have this monitor clip changes button, because you notice that was this weird sort of dotted line. Uneditable, if that's a word. Once you uncheck monitor clip changes, now all of those keyframes can be manually edited. And by the way, this is dynamic. So as you move things around, and again, you can rescan and reanalyze, it will reconfigure this. Now, you wouldn't do this here for dialogue, because this is sync to picture. But if you, were if you were ducking against sound effects, sound design, and you change that whoosh, you, again, you use your clip spotting, you make it perfectly in time, it can, it can reanalyze and configure against that as well, really effectively. This is so good. Now, listen, if you want to do traditional sidechain ducking in Audition, yes, we have that. For the audio engineers, the audio nerds out there, like myself, Duran, Eric, and many of you, I'm sure, you want to use your favorite waves compressor, whatever it is, to sidechain duck or sidechain EQ. You can do that in Audition. But for something like this, oh, where did my video panel go? Where we simply need to automate this process quickly, this is unbelievably effective. And again, you can make these changes. They're all completely non-destructive. Very, very simply, if we wanted to bring that audio back up, it's very easy to do that. By the way, you'll see that as I'm moving this reduction slider. Do you notice the line is dropping more and more? We're reducing it more and more. It's relearning each time I do that, all right? Just as before, like if I move these clips around, it'll do the same thing there. Notice the lines are moving. It's learning using Adobe Sensei to reconfigure the ramp and the curve, all right? The new version of Audition, my friends. We are out of time. Thank you so much for spending the last half hour of NAB with me and staying till the end. We're back tomorrow with more Premiere, After Effects, Creative Cloud, Character Animator, and all of our amazing customers. Hope you had an amazing day one at NAB. Thank you so much. We'll see you tomorrow. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.